Today, Travis and I are out in Minnesota checking out this all-new generation 2025 Chevy Equinox. And for this generation, we have an all-new trim, the Active. We're going to see what's new on the inside, on the outside, as well as drive it on the open road and see how it performs. Let's check it out. It's not just a new model year for 25, it really is a total redesign for the Equinox, and it's more in line with the rest of Chevy's crossover SUV lineup. It's more truckified, more ruggedized, and that really starts here with the front end. Yeah, for sure. So the trim level setup this year is going to be the LT, the RS, as well as this Active that is all new for the 2025 model year. It's going to give you some off-road pedigree and some different front fascia and rear fascia over the other models. Now, up front, we do have kind of a all blacked out look with this kind of smoked chrome up top surrounding that grill. We have these fake inlets off to the side that are not actual functioning grills. They are faux, they're blocked off in the back. We have this all blacked out design, active right here in the front, black bow tie, as well as just the overall black features. Now, we do have the divorce headlight set up. Uh, it's gonna be on all trims. We're gonna have LED DRLs and LED headlights standard across the trim levels. But here on the active, we're gonna get those fog lights as standard. Moving around to the side, this is going to be the biggest differentiating factor over the active, over the other trims, and that's going to be these General Grabber all-terrain tires wrapped around a machine-faced gray 17-inch wheel. Now, in terms of sizing for the wheels on this Equinox lineup, it's going to range from a 17 all the way up to a 20 on the RS. Now, that 20 is going to be optional on the RS trim. Now, on our vehicle, we do have the two-tone roof, so we have the white roof with the body color down below, and that's going to be either body-colored roof or white-colored here on the uh, active, and on the RS, you're either going to get black or body-colored. You don't get the white uh, treatment over on the RS. Now in terms of design, it's a much more upright boxy design over the outgoing generation. Here on the C-pillar, we have what Chevy is known for on their crossovers and SUVs, and there's that shark fin giving that illusion of motion in terms of design. Now, it also gives us a floating roof look, and is that something you're on board with, or do you prefer things to be a little bit more connected? I like it. It definitely is a large C-pillar, so driving dynamics inside, kind of giving that greenhouse feel. It does take away from that just a little bit, but Outside, it does look pretty good in terms of design. And if you had to pick one roof color between white, black, or body color, do you have a preference? It's going to be black. See, I got to go white, but that's okay. That's yeah. why there are options. That's why there are options. Now, in terms of sizing, this is going to be two and a half inches wider over the outgoing generation. And when looking at it, uh, compared to some of the competitors, it's going to be very similar size to the Nissan Rogue. Now, when looking at it compared to the CRV and the RAV4, it's going to be bigger than the RAV4, but smaller than the CRV. In the back, you're going to get LED taillights as standard, and these are going to be very similar design to what you're going to find on the Trailblazer as well as the Traverse. Now, it's going to be in its own suit, but it's going to be very similar design. Now, in the rear, you get the blacked out treatment, you get the blacked out bow tie, you have the Equinox all wheel drive on the driver's side, and that active indication over there on the passenger. Now, up top, we do have the third brake light that is going to be LED as well, and right under that, we do have the optional digital rear view mirror that is the camera for said mirror. Now, down below, the lower fascia is going to be different between the LT and the RS and this Active. And here on the Active, you kind of have this nice gray look with no exhaust tips visible on the rear end. Now, if you did have a tow hitch back here, you could tow up to 1,500 pounds, and that is going to be the maximum capability for this new generation. So 1,500 pounds is respectable when comparing it to other models in this class, but it is not the most. The RAV4 will likely have the best towing capacity. Now let's go ahead and open this rear hatch and see what kind of cargo space we're working with. Yeah, it turns out we are on our way directly from here to the airport, meaning that all of our stuff is here. And I've been out on the road for a week, so I brought the big bag, not the carry-on. Now, we weren't able to stand this on its side. We were able to lay it down, but there is still quite a bit of room in here. That's going to be 29 cubic feet available to you. Yeah, and if you fold down that second row and you need that extra space, you can get 63.5 cubic feet of total storage. Now, that is a decent amount. We could fit a lot more stuff, but it is not class leading. If you were wanting more storage, the CRV offers quite a bit more at 76.5 cubic feet. So, if you have more stuff than this, or if you have more stuff with that second row folded down, maybe the CRV would be a better choice. Let's get all of our stuff out and take a quick look underneath. Now that we got all of our luggage out of the back, we can take a better look at this false floor. If we pull this up, we have quite a bit more storage underneath with just a felt liner or a plastic liner. If we pull that up, we do have a Maxxis temporary spare. So it's nice that we don't have that fix a flat and puncture kit because when you're stranded on the road, I don't necessarily want to fix a flat. I want to just replace the tire and get on my way. Under the hood, we've got one engine, but two different transmissions depending on that drivetrain configuration. Gone is the old six speed. Yep, gone is the old six speed in with the new eight speed. So if you go for the front wheel drive configuration, you're gonna get a CVT paired to your 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. But if you choose all wheel drive like we have here on our active, you're gonna get an eight speed automatic. Now, if you choose the front wheel drive, you're gonna get 27 miles per gallon. If you choose all wheel, it'll go down to 26 combined. 
Now in terms of power, we have the same power as the previous generation, 175 horsepower, 203 pound-feet of torque in the all-wheel drive, and the front-wheel drive will be neutered back a little bit in terms of torque numbers with 185 pound-feet. Here in the interior, we have a pretty attractive look, and a lot of this is going to be standard, just like this two-screen layout. The driver's screen is going to be 11 inches and 11.3 for the infotainment screen. We're also going to find this insert available in all of the trims. It's just going to be dependent on what the interior is. And for this particular interior, we have the active exclusive maple sugar. And this look is one I really enjoy. There's enough color, there's enough depth, and it really, really matches this cacti green, which I don't think was any accident. Now, this is going to be what Chevy calls Evotex. That's going to be a synthetic leather here. And then we have some microfiber suede inserts throughout the rest of that seat design. Also, you can see here active there in the headrest, and that is also that microfiber suede. The Evotex is going to carry itself along, well, everything here that is that maple sugar color. So down along the sides, that's going to be nice and soft touch. But we also find sort of this jet engine looking air vent on both the driver and the passenger sides. That is also going to change color depending on what the interior design is. For the glove box, we have a pretty standard look. It's going to be a bin style design. You should be able to fit quite a few things in here, but certainly not a large tablet, maybe a smaller one. We don't have any here with us to go ahead and try out today. But if we move up to the infotainment screen, this is where things are gonna be very familiar and also very accessible. The home design here is pretty simple with all the apps laid out and where you need them. You can see we are currently connected to Nick's phone, but I won't make any silly calls that he doesn't know are coming. But we are able to go ahead and play our music, set up maps, navigation, all of these things using our phone projection. He has an iPhone, I have Android Auto, both of those will connect here. It's only the General Motors products that are electric that got rid of those two things, but it's worth noting they are here on this model. And this screen is pretty snappy, it's also pretty big, so everything is easy to use. What we don't find on the screen are going to be the climate controls because those are going to be found down below. Standard dual climate, I'll go ahead and turn that down. It's humid enough as it is. And for this particular model, we have heated and ventilated seats. Now that's going to be an option for the front driver's seats, but all seats are gonna be standard heated and a heated steering wheel. We also do get the rear heated seats with that particular package. But again, many of these things are going to be standard. Like I said, that dual climate control. Your fan speed buttons are gonna be here in the middle, syncing your zones and automatic, which is what I imagine most folks will do. The only downside to this layout is that those are in a gloss black so they're likely to get a little bit more scratched up. Here in the driver's screen, there are gonna be some things you can change. Let me switch hands there. You can change the different layouts. We can go to a full screen mapping, which we'll definitely use later. And we can set up to take a look at some of the other safety functions that do come standard. We'll cover that as we drive the vehicle. Moving on to the steering wheel, we have the same design for both the LT and the Active. It's just going to be a black soft touch steering wheel. On the RS, however, we do get a flat bottom and that's definitely a nice look. One of the big changes is actually gonna be happening behind the steering wheel, which is that we have a drive selector stock up here instead of a dial or any other sort of gear change in the center console. What they haven't included in that driver stock is going to be the L mode or the low mode, and that's gonna be found here on the steering wheel. So if you are climbing a hill or descending a hill and you wanna have a little bit more control of what gear you're in, you would simply engage L and then utilize the paddle shifters that you find on the back of the steering wheel. You'll also find some of your other controls like skip track and volume up and down. That one's gonna be here on the right side, but those are gonna be a little bit hidden to keep the steering wheel a pretty clean design. Down below the climate controls, we do have a pretty large tray here with two USB-C ports. That's gonna be great for some cell phone charging, but also great for charging is going to be this wireless charger, which is part of a package, but it'll fit any big phone you have and it'll charge pretty easily through some of the larger cases. Both Nick and I were able to charge our phones without any issue. Moving farther back, we have two cup holders, though they are gonna be surrounded by this gloss black, as we'll find in some of the rest of this interior, not my favorite, but what we do also have down here is going to be the drive mode selector. This is only gonna be for the all-wheel drive model. It comes with normal, snow, ice, and off-road. The other front-wheel drive model will come with both normal modes and snow and ice, but this drive selector is not going to be present. Here under the center armrest, there is a divided holder here. There is a pretty decent, well, at least tall space. It's maybe not enormous, but there are quite a few things you could fit here if you have to. And just a little cubby for some of your smaller items, maybe change some chapstick, some of those things to make sure stuff isn't getting lost while you're driving around. But moving up here to the ceiling, well, it might be a little bit tough to see just based on the light, but we have 
a sunglass holder here, and as you won't have any difficulty seeing, we have a pretty large sunroof that goes just about to the top of the head of those rear passengers. This is nice and big and of course has a cover, so if you don't want to utilize it, not only do you not have to, but this is not standard, it is its own standalone, so you can get pretty specific about how you'd like to utilize your space. Moving into the back, you can see we have the same kind of design here on the rear seats as we do in the front. The only thing we don't get is that active labeling there, but we do still have the microfiber suede inserts and that Evotex material on the gray portions. There is also a fold down center armrest that has two cup holders in it. That should be pretty spacious and enough room for whoever needs it. And in this particular model, we have heated rear seats, outboard seating, and two more USB-C ports down below. Now we're out today in the active trim and we found one of the spots that I think most active consumers are thinking of when they go to buy their next car, which is a dirt road. That's why we have the all terrain tires, but those, tri those tires, excuse me, are a little bit more than than necessary for this dirt road. Oh yeah, for sure. And all season could definitely handle a road like this. This is just your basic forest service road. Maybe a little less washboardy than you'd find in the Pacific Northwest where we're from. Yep. But here in Minnesota, it's a pretty relatively flat surface, but these all terrains are fairly aggressive for this type of terrain. And I think, again, like you said, this is gonna be where everybody's gonna be driving their vehicle for the most part. There's gonna be that very few people that actually push the limits of the all, all wheel drive and off-road capability. Yeah, and if they want more out of a smaller vehicle, there are going to be other options that provide more genuine off-road capability yep. than just, well, just dirt road capability. Yeah, namely the RAV4. Yeah. You can do that TRD off-road package, or you can go for the, for the Adventure. Yeah, this is definitely more like the Adventure than the TRD off-road for the RAV4. It honestly, it reminds me of something like a Trail Sport package, we, yeah. which we don't find on a CRV, but it's that Trail Sport treatment. It's not so visual. much... It's not so much like um, the wilderness that we see on the Subarus, but again, it's just about what fits your need. And what I do like about this active trim is this interior. This maple sugar, number one, is a fantastic name. Number two, nice and comfortable. And three, it's a color you don't normally get in this segment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's definitely more of a girthy tone. Gives you that kind of outdoorsy adventure feel without mm -hmm. making it too rugged. Because sometimes these vehicles make their interiors too rugged where it's not necessarily, you don't feel like you're getting a lot of uh, luxury. You're getting more utility, if that makes sense. So having, the, having this interior is a nice touch. Yeah, and this particular model is an all-wheel drive model. So with that system, like, yeah, you're gonna be able to handle quite a bit as, as far as your daily driving needs would go. If it's snowy, you know, having these tires certainly helps, um, but isn't totally necessary. I will say with the exterior color, this, I mean, obviously this whole package, but the cacti green, the white roof, and this interior is definitely a look and it's very much lifestyle, but I think that's what people are gonna gravitate towards. Yeah, for sure. And one thing to point out is this is a front wheel drive based all wheel drive system. Mm -hmm. So you can turn the all wheel drive off by a button off to the left side of the steering wheel. You can press that and it'll just go into front wheel drive, but when you need it, you can press that all wheel drive and it'll kick that all wheel drive sending power to that rear, rear axle or rear end when it needs to. So it's mm -hmm. like kind of having a nice best of both worlds situation. Really, you don't get a lot less economy than your front wheel drive variant. You only get a mile per gallon combined less. So that's a really great feature is that you don't really have to sacrifice too much to go for the all wheel drive. For sure. And one thing that I'm a big fan of is a good front wheel drive system. I don't think the world needs all wheel drive as much as they think they do, but I did get a chance to drive an LT yesterday in the front wheel drive. And one thing I'll tell you, the big difference there and the thing that would kick me towards all wheel drive is going to be that transmission because you get a lot more responsiveness in the engine on that eight speed than we do with that CVT. And it makes quite a bit of difference because this is not particularly quick to begin with. No, no, we just, uh, we went ahead and tested out the zero to 60 on a closed course, of course. <laughs> and uh, nine and a half seconds was the best zero to 60 we could get. Now, I don't know what the elevation is like here. Is it a turbocharged motor? Mm -hmm. If it's thinner air, so on, yeah, There's yada, yada. two of us, all of our luggage, yep. however, that's not going to make a world of difference. No, no. I'd say nine seconds in a perfect world, foot braking it. So it's relatively slow uh, in the grand scheme of things, but you're not going to expect much out of a 1.5 liter, especially when it only makes 175 horsepower. So he got to drive the front wheel drive LT yep. and RS yesterday. Is that yep. correct? Yeah. I was stuck on an airplane or a pilot was late to my flight. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the, the thing about this vehicle is that it handles a lot better than it performs. Yep. So it's a lot better behind the wheel. It's a lot better in the corners. It's it's composed, it's competent. Um, it's very you know, composed. We haven't hit any serious, you know, dirt road uh, washboards, like you said, like we're used to back home. 
But everything here has been really nice in the places you're going to drive it. Yeah. I will say, having driven those other two models, one of the first things I got I noticed when I got in this model was actually how loud it was on the road. And that loudness was not coming from the car, it was coming from the tires. So yep. that's one thing that most people aren't familiar with, is if you get an all-terrain tire, it's going to sound different because those treads are completely different. Yeah. And so while it is going to be more capable in certain circumstances, it's also going to be louder in just about every single one of those. Yeah, you really start to notice when you uh, apply the brakes and you start kind of rolling to a stop, you really notice that rolling resistance or kind of that tread kind of pounding the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's when you really start to find the the real makeup of what an all-terrain tire is. Now, some all-terrains perform better, some perform worse. This one, I can't say what's better or worse, but I will say it is louder than your standard all-season or just your standard tire that you're gonna find on the other trim. So that is kind of a caveat. You get the all-terrain capability, but it does trade off in terms of interior cabin noise. I will say the cabin here is nice. You know, we have a huge sunroof. Um, even for the folks in the back, they really do get to take advantage of that. Yeah. The space up here is great. All these screens are standard. So you're not really having to pay for the everyday experience. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot you can't get on the LT, which is one thing I appreciate. You know, the LT is your baseline and then it goes off in kind of a Y shape to either the RS or the active. And it's just kind of a personal flair because they all drive very similar. They, they feel similar. Um, it's, the equipment is basically the same. It's just what, what vibe do you want? I've, I've almost never seen a car that has so much vibe variance within itself um, and that's really the big difference yeah definitely yeah everyday driving characteristics whether it be accelerating stopping handling or overall ride quality i feel like this does everything pretty decently other than accelerating that's kind of its downfall mm -hmm. but i would say that just the overall ride quality is excellent that's one thing when i hopped behind the wheel when we first drove out here first thing i noticed was how composed how soft and kind of like I guess lack of a better term, supple. Mm -hmm. it's, like it's sure. kind of a corny word, but supple, it was just like very soft and it just, it just took direction really well. Yeah. Steering's heavy, the suspension feels nice. And one thing to touch on on the suspension is that the Active does get differently tuned suspension according to Chevy. I don't know what exactly that means. They don't give us any sort of figures, any sort of verbiage in terms of mm -hmm. increased compression or uh, rebound or anything like that, but it does have different suspension in terms of tuning than the LT or the RS. So that is one thing to point out and that could enhance the overall ride quality. But you drove the other ones, you can probably touch on that a little bit. Better. Yeah, it all feels pretty similar. And I think a lot of that's just kind of compensating for the different uh, wheel and tire combinations, just making sure things are, are set the way they need to be. The other thing I want to point out is the fact that neither you nor I are particularly small human beings. Mm -hmm. This is a compact crossover. It's got two and a half inches wider than the previous model, but there's a lot of room here across the front. At no point are we feeling crammed in here. No, and it definitely helps we have this massive sunroof above our head to kind of make it a little bit more airy inside, but it is very spacious. If I sit completely straight up, there's I mean, there's got to be almost a foot between us, maybe eight, ten inches. Yeah. But yeah, we're both seven and a half feet tall. We're really tall people. <laughs> no, we're around six seven feet tall. Seven feet tall, six feet wide, you know, yeah. and somehow we still fit. No, it's definitely an airy cabin and it feels very spacious. And I think that two and a half inches wider in terms of the dimensions definitely helps in all senses. Driving characteristics, interior feeling, it all plays a massive part into the overall um, feeling of this vehicle. We talked a lot about what comes standard and how a lot of it is the same across the lineup. Safety is one of those. Yeah, safety is standard across the board with plenty of features to be had. And that's rear cross traffic alert, enhanced lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, things of that nature come standard all the way from the LT up to the active. So it doesn't matter, you're going to get that safety. Not only that, but the optional safety features are also available at every trim level. Yep, exactly. So if this isn't enough safety for you or features, there is plenty to be had in all trims. You can go for the convenience package, whether that's number two or number three, depending on what trim you go for. And that gets you a lot of different features. It gets you your digital rear view mirror. It gets you ventilated seats in the front, heated seats in the rear, just a ton of amenities to be had. But even at the starting price of $29,995, at the LT front wheel drive, you are getting a ton of features for under $30,000. I mean, mm -hmm. a dual 11 inch screen, one's 11.3, but dual 11 inch screens, you're getting heated seat standard, heated steering wheel standard, and you're just getting a ton of space for this type of vehicle. And I think it's overall a great package. I'm really impressed with it, to be honest. Yeah, and speaking of packaging, let's go ahead and talk about price now.
pricing for the 2025 Equinox will start around $2,000 more than the 2024 model. For the LT front wheel drive, you're looking at $29,995 to start, and it's a $2,000 premium to go to that uh, all wheel drive. Now the RS as well as the Active will have the same pricing structure, $34,395 to start and $36,395 to go with this all wheel drive like we have here. So that is going to be the end of the video. I had a great time driving this vehicle with Travis getting to experience this new generation of Equinox. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you love this new design? Do you hate it? What would you change? Or if you are in the market for a vehicle like this, are you going to choose the Equinox or what would you choose? I want to know. So let me know down in the comments. Until next time, my name is Nick with Auto Buyer's Guide. Travis is behind the camera and we will see you guys then.